Well, thanks for having me out here today. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the topic was the world's largest airline. And the new United is the world's largest airline, but that isn't particularly important to me. It's not particularly important to my management team. What's important is to become the world's leading airline. And that's what we're working on. And that's a process, and that takes time. But what we, the reason that we merged, the reason we brought Continental and United together is, well, I guess the best way to do it is to sort of ask you to do a thought exercise. If I ask you as a thought exercise to create the world's leading airline, and I gave you a blank sheet of paper, and I said the only constraint is to make sure that this airline is certificated in the U.S., that's it. You'd create an airline with hubs on the East Coast, like New York and Dulles, a hub on the Gulf Coast for the North-South flows, Houston, hubs on the West Coast, San Fran and LA, and for the flows off to the Pacific, and within and the strengths up and down the West Coast, and a hub on the third coast, Chicago. And you'd have Denver and Cleveland thrown in. And with that, you'd also have a spectacular fleet a modern and fuel efficient fleet and a really great aircraft order book and continuing to take brand new airplanes. You'd have the world's largest loyalty program. The loyalty program of the new United, Continental United Together, the new Mileage Plus program, has more members than there are citizens of France worldwide. You'd have experienced people, people who know what they're doing, people who want to give good service. You'd have world class facilities you'd have the ability to optimize the fleet across that network. You'd create what we have today at the New United. Now, it is a process, and it does take time. We're a heavily regulated business. It takes time to bring work groups together. It takes time to go through the regulatory process. It takes time, and it takes time to adjust. But we have the assets and the people, the fleet, the facilities, the product, the people, to be the world's leading airline. And we are creating the world's leading airline largely for you the business traveler. United and Continental have always focused on the business traveler. You're our bread and butter. You're the customer we serve. We take all customers, we love all the customers. But business travelers are particularly important. And so we're investing in that product. This merger is going to deliver between one and $1.2 billion a year in net synergies. And we're going to invest that back into our product, back into our fleet, back into our facilities, back into our people. And we're announcing today $550 million of investments in our fleet. Not new airplanes. This is in the interior of airplanes. We're installing flatbed seats in the remainder of our existing international fleet. When we're done, we'll have 185 airplanes with flatbed seats, 185 airplanes, more than any US airline. We're taking United's Great Economy Plus product and putting that across the entire continental fleet. And when we're done, we're going to have more premium economy seating than any U.S. airline. We're installing wireless on the 200 continental aircraft that today have direct TV. And it's not just any wireless, it's KA band wireless, which is the newest, best, fattest pipe there is uh, that we're putting on board those aircraft. We've got RFPs to put Wi-Fi on the remainder of our, of our mainline fleet, international fleet and the remainder of the domestic fleet. The Airbus aircraft that we have today, 152 A319s and A320s, we're refreshing those, the, the interiors of those aircraft. We're putting in new bins that will double the bin size in those aircraft. The PS fleet that we fly from JFK to LAX in San Francisco, we're going to bring those airplanes in. We're going to completely gut the interiors and put in flatbed seats and Economy Plus and Economy and AVOD and Wi-Fi and power throughout the entire airplane. A spectacular product for the Transcon out of JFK. On our 747-400s, where we've done a good job with the IPTE product, the International Premium Travel Experience, the International First Class, and Business, and Economy Plus, and Economy, in the back of those airplanes, those airplanes are deficient in the, in the entertainment, and we're going to be putting streaming wireless on those aircraft. So any customer gets on those airplanes, taking their iPad, their iPhone, their computer, any Wi-Fi-enabled device, will be streaming video, and they'll be able to select from the various videos that we'll be streaming. So we're investing in the product over half a billion dollars just in the existing fleet. That's not counting all the aircraft we have on order. Next year alone, we're taking 19 brand new 737-900ERs and six brand new, beautiful Boeing 787 Dreamliners, a truly game-changing aircraft. And we're delighted to be the North American launch customer for the 787. 
But despite all that wonderful things that I'm talking about, what we really need to do is make sure we deliver good service. That's incredibly important. That's why I and my entire management team are focused so heavily on the culture of the new company. Because we're operating the new United on the basic two principles that my mommy taught me. You treat other people like you'd like to be treated, and you never tell a lie. We call that dignity and respect, treating each other and our customers with dignity and respect and direct, open, and honest communication. And investing in the tools so we can let you know what's going on. Because it's, it's very frustrating when a flight's delayed and the customers don't know why. With, with the wireless technology we're investing in, the technology we're investing in, the hundreds of millions of dollars we're pouring in technology, in the future we'll be able to communicate so much better with our passengers. And make sure that when the flight is late that we can reaccommodate you. And if you don't like the reaccommodation of the Wi-Fi, you can change it en route. There's so many things that we're doing to focus on making sure that we're easy to do business with, the business customers want to fly us, leisure customers want to fly us. Our goal at the New United is to have a carrier where our coworkers want to work, are proud to work, enjoy coming to work every day, trust each other, trust management, give good service because they want to, not because they're trained to or told to, because they're proud of where they work, because they want to. We want to have a, an airline that customers want to fly, and we want to have an airline that investors want to invest in. We'll be taking the profitability, the sustained and sustainable profitability of the new United, and we're going to do something really radical with some of that money. We're going to pay our debt when it falls due, and we're not going to always refinance that debt. We're going to deleverage the business, de-risk the business, so we can be here, as the commercial showed from 30 years ago, the next 30 years, and 30 years, and 30 years beyond that. So I'm going to thank you for having me here today. I want to particularly thank you for the business. There's a lot of high rollers in this audience. There's a lot of people who control a lot of business. And I want to thank you for the business. I want to let you know that we need, we, I know that we need to earn your business. But I am confident that we're, when we're done integrating these carriers, we're going to have a spectacular airline that you'll want to fly. Thank you very much.